Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I want to show you how to take a very large arcade library and reduce it down to a much smaller and more manageable size. Now if you've ever downloaded a full ROM set, you've found that there are probably a ton of different duplicates and clones of games. And in addition to that, there are also all sorts of games that you're not even interested in. And so I want to show you an easy way to basically take that and pare it all down in a way that's very simple and satisfying. Now there are specific programs out there that actually allow you to do this. We're not going to do that. We're going to use a different program to put it all together. So let's get started and I'll show you how this works. So first let's talk about the different types of emulators that we're talking about here. Number one is MAME and that's what we'll be using today. But then also there's Final Burn Alpha and Final Burn Neo. And these are all similar because they all have just a huge amount of files in one big folder and you have to pare them down. So we're going to use this method on MAME but it works with these other two as well. Now you can see here, this is the ROM set I'm using, and it has 4,863 ROMs in it, which totals 34 gigabytes. Now I know there are thousands of these that I'm never gonna touch, so we're gonna try to pare those down. But first, let me explain all the different types of ROM sets that are available. So the first type of ROM set is called a full non-merged ROM set. And this is the biggest of them all. And basically what it does is it takes every single zip file and puts every file inside of it that you're gonna need to play that one single game. So for example, pacman.zip also has the puckman.zip, which is the parent file inside of this zip file. In addition to that, it'll have any sort of BIOS or system files that are needed to run the game as well. So with this, you know that you're confident by taking just the pacman.zip and you'll be able to throw that into your emulator and it'll work. You don't have to worry about having any other files around. Now this basically results in a lot of redundancies among the different files. So that's why it's a much larger ROM set, but that's what we'll be using today. So the next one down is called a non-merged ROM set. And this one also includes that pacman.zip. Within that, it'll have the parent, so puckman.zip, which is the Japanese version, but the BIOS files will not be included in that. They'll be separate and they'll be in the main folder. So all the different Pac-Man games that require a specific BIOS file will be able to pull from that one BIOS file as opposed to having them all inside the pacman.zip or whatever zip file they have. So it has a little bit less redundancies and because of that, it'll be a little bit smaller in file size. And finally, you have split ROM sets. Now, split ROM sets are the smallest of all because they don't have any redundancies. Basically, you will have within the pacman.zip just the pacman.zip files. The other files, like the puckman.zip, will be separate. So if you happen to delete the puckman.zip, pacman.zip will not work because it requires that. So that makes it a lot more confusing to work with. In addition to that, the BIOS will also be separate, which means that you also can't delete that because then the games won't work at all either. So this one, even though the split has a smaller file size, it's much harder to pare that down. So that's why we want to use a full non-merge set because that'll allow us to pare it down without having to worry that any of the games won't work anymore. So included in these ROM sets, you will also find CHD files and CHD stands for compressed hunks of data. And this is basically used for CD-ROM based arcade games from the mid to late 90s. So for example, Killer Instinct, NFL Blitz, Beat Mania, Area 51, games like that all require these CHD files to work. The thing is about retro handheld devices, they don't have the processing power to play most of these games anyway, and these are huge amounts of space. So for example, a good 10 gigs out of the 34 gig non-merged full set will be from CHD files. And you can just delete those outright unless you wanna try certain games. So for example, I always try to put the Killer Instinct ones in there because I always hope that those games are gonna work and the file sizes aren't huge or anything. All right, so now that we understand kind of all the different file types and everything, let's actually dig into it and I'll show you how to actually do this process. So we're gonna use a program called LaunchBox, and this is a Windows program that basically allows you to import all of your ROMs as well as your emulators, and then boot those ROMs through the emulators through this kind of front end device. And basically it allows you to just organize and streamline your library. All we're gonna use this for is to download the app itself, we're gonna import all our ROMs, we're gonna filter out a bunch of ROMs we don't want, and then we're gonna re-export them out. And that's how we're gonna shrink down our library. Okay, so once you've downloaded and installed the app, just go ahead and launch it. And then you can close out of this wizard. We're actually just gonna go into the tools and import them ourselves. So you just go up to this uh, hamburger bar here, this toolbox here, go to tools, and then you go to import, and then do MAME set. It'll ask you what kind of name to use. Just go to arcade, 
And then in the next one, pick out your actual ROM set and just find that folder and then hit select folder. Okay, and then just keep it on MAME if you're using MAME. And then it'll ask you if you want to download the metadata. And I always put yes, that way you have all the data associated with each game. And here you could also download box art if you wanted to at the same time. You're not really going to use it, but if, for example, if you wanted to be able to browse through the files to figure out which game is which, you could select one of those. I'm just going to hit no for now. Okay, and then when you get to this window here, this is where you want to filter out. So here you want to say skip clones entirely, and then pick the region you like, and then do all the skips that you want for all the games that don't matter to you. For example, trivia games, or fruit games, or things like that. Just skip all of those. And then also it's going to ask you if you want to create playlists. Just go ahead and hit no for all those. You don't need any of those playlists. Okay, so it's going to parse through your folder. It's going to show you the names of all the games here. And then you just hit finish. Okay, and at this point it will import all of your games. It'll take a while, probably about 10 minutes or so. And once they've all been imported in, you'll then get this grid, which includes all of the games. And you can see here there's 2,799 games. So we've reduced this significantly from almost 5,000 down to less than 3,000. So we've already cut down about 2,000 games already. Okay, so at this point you could actually go through the library, and if there's specific games you want to delete, you could just delete them out of here right now. Otherwise, you can just go and export everything. So to export all of these games, once you've narrowed down your library, just go down to Tools, and then just go to Export or Copy ROMs. And it'll say, hey, you're going to make a whole copy of all this. Are you sure about that? And you're just going to hit Yes. Okay, and then find a new place to put them. So for example, I'm just going to go into my hard drive, and then I'm going to make a folder, and I'm just going to call it No Duplicates. Okay, and you select the folder, and then it's going to export it out. And this will take a while, about 10 minutes or so, but after that I think you're good to go. Okay, so you can see here I have now exported it all over and everything looks good. Now like I mentioned I have some CHD files I like, so I'm going to move those over from the original folder, and these are just for like Killer Instinct and NFL Blitz and stuff, somewhat smaller games, but I wanted to move those over as well. At this point all you have to do is just move it onto your SD card and you're done. But if you want to go the extra mile, you could also download your images and videos right now. So we're going to use a program called Scraper to do that. And in order to do this, all you have to do is hit plus and add a new system, find the MAME within all the different systems that are there, and then just hit OK. Now within here, you want to make sure that you change it to find the exact folder that you have all of your non-duplicate ROMs. In addition to that, you also want to make sure the front end is under recall box. So make sure that's good. Then go over to the game list, change it to say no backup, create new. Next, go into the media one, and this is where you're going to change what type of media you want to download. So here I'm going to make the left one a 2D box, and that's going to include the box art of this arcade game itself. You could use a screenshot or a title screen, whatever you like the best. Then I'm going to add another one to the right, and I'm going to change that to video. So I'm going to download not only the box art for this game, I'm also going to download the video. At this point, you just want to make sure that everything is correct. You want to make sure that your 2D box art is going to media slash images, and that your videos are going to media slash videos. After that, all you have to do is hit play. Now a word of warning on this is that it's going to take a long time to download the videos. The box art is only going to be about say 300 megs altogether for these 3000 files, but the videos are going to be much larger and it's up to you whether or not you want to do the videos or not either, uh, but overall the videos are going to be about 6 gigabytes altogether. So even though you're paring down the file size a lot when you're reducing the amount of ROMs, you're kind of adding a bunch of space there anyway because you're going through and adding a bunch of videos. And these videos are really great and it's nice for the experience, but you have to decide whether or not you want that extra six gigabytes on your SD card. So altogether, it took me about three hours to download all of those files. Now that seems like a long time, but if I was to have plugged that into my like RG351P and then tried to scrape everything, it would have taken much longer. So it's not that bad. Okay, so once you're done, all you have to do is hit the check mark and then go into your folder and check it out.
Now you can see here altogether it's about 14 gigabytes for these almost 3,000 ROMs. Now if I was to take away the videos, those six gigabytes of videos, we were left with about eight gigabytes altogether to store nearly 3,000 ROMs. So it becomes a very streamlined ROM set and I think that's really kind of cool. And again, I didn't actually filter through and delete anything else like that, but it just gives you an idea of how much space is gonna take up. And I really do like the videos. I think they add a great experience to the actual user interface, but it's gonna be up to you. Do you. Are you okay with just having the box art or maybe the screenshot? But for me, I like to have the box art and then the video, so I'm okay with that extra file space. Okay, so once you're happy with the amount of ROMs that you have and you have your images in check and you're also okay with your videos, all you have to do at that point is just move everything over to your SD card. And depending on the system you're using, just move it over to wherever they're expecting to have that main ROM set. All right, so let's test it out. Let's start up my RG351P and let's go through the menus and see what it looks like. So you can see here, I'm scrolling through the different games and I see the box art and then I see a little video. And to me, I really like this because it gives me an idea immediately of whether or not I wanna play that game because I get to see it in action as opposed to an image or just looking at the title of it. All right, so let's boot up a game. Let's try Aliens vs Predator. And here we are, it just booted up fine. So uh, everything worked out well. You know, we were able to take almost 5,000 ROMs and 34 gigabytes of data and reduce that down to about eight gigabytes of data. And then we added an additional six in order to have the videos on there and the box art as well. But we're left with about 14 gigabytes altogether of data, which stores nearly 3000 ROMs without any duplicates, without any of that crazy stuff. And they're all US based because I picked the North American ROM set. So I really like this idea. It makes it really kind of fun. There's a lot of freedom in this process. You can go through and for example, even within LaunchBox, you can go in and you can sort it by the date released. So for example, if you know you don't want anything that's past like say 1994, you can just delete all of those ROMs and then delete them from your library altogether. Or vice versa. If you know that you're not gonna want a bunch of games from the 70s or early 80s, you can delete those out as well. You can sort it by fighting games, shoot em ups, all that kind of stuff. You can go and you can add or delete the ROMs as you see fit. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.